Hey peeps, Sarah here from Sparrow Springs, and we are working on another abstract watercolor for the collection of Banish Bear walls. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button just so we can uh, keep things on terms here. And then uh, we're working on this collection. This collection is going to be my largest collection yet. So I'm working on 50 different prints. It's going to be huge. So if you want to be notified when that goes live, make sure you sign up for my email list that's in the description. Let's jump into it. Okay, so starting off, I've got everything taped off and I have um, have a kind of a vision for this piece. Now I did deviate and I, in the end, regret that I deviated, but at the same time, I did learn some things uh, working on this piece. So this is an abstract watercolor painting. Now I, I'm still fairly new to watercolors and abstract watercolor uh, is kind of one of those, one of those things that kind of gets away from me sometimes. So this is really just a lot of practice and a lot of experimentation, but at the same time, I'm learning some things that I'm definitely going to apply for later. Now this, this was intended to be for my collection, but after I finished the piece, I'm just not 100% satisfied with it. So it won't be going into my collection, but here's some things that I did like about this piece. So um, as you can see, I went quite a bit in between and um, this is a tip that I learned from a watercolor painting course by Aaron Blaze and just um, going in between each layer and fully drying it before you put on the next layer. To, uh, that is kind of an essential thing uh, for this technique in particular. And it's super helpful in the sense that uh, like you can't get the same kind of layering effect if you're putting it on wet. It just gets kind of muddled together and kind of gross looking. Arrow, stop. <laughs> I have a pop filter on my microphone and he just thinks it's the most fascinating thing ever. Anyways, so I'm drying each layer in between and I wasn't 100% happy with this blue either. It took me quite a while to mix it and I just, I couldn't quite get to that same, um, that same value and tone that I wanted. So I was hoping for something a little bit richer and a little bit darker. So I have an idea of what I'm going to do next time. I think I just added a little bit too much complimentary to tone it down and it just kind of went a little, a little muddy on me. So, um, but the thing that I do like is some of these hard edges. So when you are drying it, okay, so the other thing is I do tend to tip the painting back and forth quite a bit to distribute the pigment. And, but the thing is I want those really hard edges and then just that very nice gradation from the edge to the inner part of the painting. So that's kind of what I was going for. Now the blue it didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to, but as soon as I got to the gold, I kind of figured out a method and I got the hang of it. So I will be able to do this again in another painting. So, and that's going to be my second attempt at some point. So for now, I'm just taking what I'm learning from this one. I actually really love the gold tones in this and um, just the way they were layered. I think I'm going to work on the composition just a little bit. Um, my initial vision for this was to have kind of an asymmetrical kind of thing where I had um, this really dark intense blue in the upper left hand corner and then it just kind of fades out and melds into the gold and then you would essentially have white in the bottom right corner. And for some reason I think I freaked out because I didn't want the colors mixing and everything. So, um, either way, that's something I would do. I, I plan on doing differently. So I'm going to take a little bit more planning into the next one. Like shocking abstract actually does require some planning sometimes. <laughs> I know there are some people who just have such an eye for it that they can just do whatever they think looks good in the moment. And it turns out awesome every time. I am not one of those people. I am a very intentional kind of person. And if I try to do, do things willy nilly, it, it barely, rarely ever works out, but that's okay. So 
<laughs> this piece was definitely a learning experience for me. And so I will be going back and redoing this one, probably closer to my vision and just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we all learned from our mistakes and I wasted two hours of my son's nap time doing this. Okay. I didn't waste it. I did not waste it. <laughs> this is my perfectionist speaking. It was not a waste. It was a learning experience. And now I have a better plan of execution for next time. So that's all I got for that. All right, peeps. Thanks for watching. So once again, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to be notified when this collection goes live, get on my email list in the description. So enjoy and I'll see you later, peeps.